We need more thrones! On the plus side, ten episodes, or soon to be seven, per season is the perfect amount to produce top quality television. But on the downside, it means we only get a handful of episodes every year, which is not enough. In such a huge fictional world, there will always be storylines omitted and events overlooked. Despite the show having 60 hours to play with so far, they've still only scratched the surface of what could be shown from Westeros. The story must be tight, sharp, and tense, and that's why, while plenty of material was shot, much of it failed to make the final cut, including the original pilot episode where the roles of Daenerys and Catelyn were yet to be given to Amelia Clark and Michelle Fairley, respectively. Since the final pilot aired, the show has leapt from daring height to daring height, and the high standard has meant plenty of good material has been unfortunately consigned to DVD bonus discs. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are nine deleted scenes from Game of Thrones you need to see. Number 9. Baelish – War of Words with Varys Peter Baelish is comfortably one of the best and worst characters in the show, and at least to begin with, he shared that title with the mysterious Varys. That's why when the pair clashed back at the beginning of the show, you had no idea which one you wanted to triumph. And here we've got a throne room showdown where Baelish discusses which of the King's Landing brothers in mutilation got the worst luck. The Hound, the Imp, or the Eunuch? No one's seen the Imp's face yet, but my money's on you. It almost sounds like the start of a bad joke. Number 8. Small Council – Wildlings on the Agenda one of the most alarming things about Thrones is that 95% of the show is likely to be rendered utterly meaningless by the very end, thanks to the pesky White Walkers and their crazy shenanigans, as nobody in the South wants to hear anything about the cruel realities beyond the Wall in the North. This scene shows the coolest man in Westeros, and possibly the universe, uberboss Tywin Lannister, suggesting a possible envoy to meet and deal with Mance Raider, the leader of the Wildling Hordes. It's not the most crucial scene, but it's certainly one that shows the very faintest sign of naivety in Tywin. Now maybe we'll even send an envoy into the frozen waste to talk with this Mance Raider. He actually thinks he can negotiate with the king beyond the wall. Aww, that's cute. Number 7. Tormund the Chicken Eater. Originally a series of books, obviously, it's worth remembering that the TV show is an adaptation, obviously, and changes are necessary, obviously. So when things get cut, it really is understandable. But the book does paint a tremendous image of Torment as we meet him for the first time, and this extended scene relates very slightly closer to what we read in the books. <clears throat> Beside the brazier, a short but immensely broad man sat on a stool, eating a hen off a skewer. Hot grease was running down his chin and into his snow-white beard, but he smiled happily all the same. Jon Snow there. Tormund is a jollier prospect in A Storm of Swords, but his sticky chicken trickin' feast phew, that was hard, transfers to the screen well all the same. Number 6. Doria, Eri's Death this far through the series, you'd be forgiven for not automatically remembering the girl who got thrown into the empty Karth vault. To refresh, that girl was Doria, one of the Dothraki handmaidens who trekked alongside Daenerys through thick and thin. You may think her punishment was harsh, until you remember how she actually betrayed Daenerys. The Mother of Dragons returns to her quarters to find Eri, another handmaiden, slaughtered and her dragons missing, as well as Doria. Later in that season, Doria is caught sleeping with Zoro Zoen Daxus, I hope I pronounced that right, the man behind the plot, and the pair are condemned together. This deleted scene shows that Doria was indeed involved and not just in the wrong bed at the wrong time. We've all been there. The greatest pleasure comes with a silk cord around the neck, tied very, very tight. I suppose you could call her a shit handmaiden what stole the Dragon Queen's dragons for wankers. Hashtag shit handmaiden what stole the Dragon Queen's dragons for wankers. Number 5. Loras. Host Renly Regrets. Loras Tyrell is an odd character. He should be far more important than he's actually made out to be, instead acting as a mere passenger throughout most of the seasons as other people discuss him, conspire about him, and trial him. In this scene, he's actually given an emotional role to play, mourning the death of Renly Baratheon. I promised him the throne and he believed me. He died because of me. The wannabe king's death was sudden, shocking, and enormous, yet the show didn't dwell for long on his demise. Here we see Loras being further developed and the repercussions of Renly's death further explored. Number 4. Daenerys – Post-Jorah Mood 
Everyone lines up to take a pop at Amelia Clarke's acting skills, and no, she won't be winning every award under the sun, but there are times when Daenerys is meant to be utterly devoid of emotion. Here, she's stunned with rage at the news of Jorah's former spying, and that's why she's virtually wordless in this scene. Never betray me. It doesn't add a great deal to the show, but Missandei acknowledging that Daenerys is truly broken up about Jorah's exile could have been a nice touch rather than just sweeping over the issue. Number 3. Shay, the Tyrion breakup. Everyone needs a brawn in their life. A vicious sellsword who can sing, joke, and could kill a man at ten paces. Bronn is great. Simply the best. Better than all the other ones. Oh, and apparently he's a thoroughly decent guy who'll gladly help you through a messy breakup, as proven in this deleted scene with Shay. Shay is hustled out of the Red Keep by Tyrion for her own safety, but she doesn't see it that way. Bronn goes down to her level and lays the truth bare in front of her. These people, even the good ones, they use us as they please. And when we're no longer any use, they spit us out, find someone else they like. He's absolutely true in what he says, and the scene could have been worked into the series to hint at her adapting and her impending betrayal. Number two, Rob Stark, angry king in the north. Oh, Rob Stark. His death feels like an eternity ago now, and it's easy to downplay his role on the show now that he's been gone for so long, but he really was a fantastic character, and Richard Madden did a brilliant job of bringing the young wolf to life. This scene is an extended version of the final cut, and it's excellent. Rob's tactical now, steely character, and kingly maturity all shine through here, despite his age. 208. But for every man we lost, the Lannisters... We lost need our men more than Tywin needs his! Number 1. Tywin Lannister. Gone fishing. Tywin Lannister has a life outside of treachery, deceit, and backhanded war dealings. Apparently, it's official, he loves a spot of fishing in his free time. Official. A fishing. Mm. Although even his leisure activities foreshadow impending doom for House Tully, who were the next to fall. Their sigil is a trout, after all, and Tywin certainly took care of them. Not only does this scene show Tywin enjoying something that doesn't result in human death, it shows Grandmaster Pycelle remarkably dropping his frail old man act and revealing himself to be a wily, clever veteran of the capital. There are times when I have trouble believing it myself. Both actors handle this scene fantastically, and it's a real shame that it didn't make the final version of the episode. And as the show rolls on, more material will continue to fall by the wayside. But fingers crossed, HBO keeps dishing it out anyway when all's said and done. And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture. You can follow me here on Twitter, and thanks for watching.